I will enter plane, aeroplane. I will fly from Kano to Lagos to go and give the man of God three thousand dollars. Greetings to you, my dearest family. Welcome again to Direct TV, bringing to you the truth with Brother Joshua. How are you doing? And I still like to, you know, point this out. You know, I think I'll do it in a few of my videos before I stop, because a lot of people just need to know that, you know, what I'm doing is not wrong. Okay. And in today's video, guys, I'm here with the man of God by person of esteem, Pastor Biodon Lawal. Now, you know, I've been bringing some messages to you, which a lot of you have confirmed that you have been blessed and I'm excited about it. So in today's video, I have two videos actually for you. All right. But this other part, I would like to play it first before you watch um, another video that will so inspire you. So just kindly um, watch this first part and I'll be right back. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Watch this. I remember the first time I gave my first $1,000. It looked like, my God, I have arrived. I have arrived. I gave a $1,000. I have arrived. Last, the church I passed in, in Nigeria then, before coming to Ghana, I used to have dollar service. I think Pastor Mike will talk about it. I used to have dollar service. And the brethren would give one, 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 one dollars. One, one dollar will finish in the market. I will give my own. Everything was $3,000. I was so excited. I will enter plane, aeroplane. I will fly from Kano to Lagos to go and give the man of God $3,000. In fact, before we go to the airport, because of Sunday, they have to open bank for me on Sunday. My wife, Pastor Lisa, was working in the bank then, Equatorial Trust Bank, so he told the manager, we are bringing money, dollars, $3,000. $3, the bank have to open for me on Sunday to keep $3,000. Oh, dear Jesus amazing grace three thousand dollars thank you lord jesus Ma say take a labor i'm super excited let's forward you do it every time yes sir every time god has increased the blessing lift your hand before the lord oh i'm speaking to you now in the name of the lord jesus see it's not a one-time event this become your life this become your story. This become your testimony. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's quickly read. He gave us all. He measured a thousand and brought me through. Nothing will stop you. He brought me through the waters. The waters were to my knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The water were to my loins. Glory to God. Oh, that's right. Afterwards, he measured another one thousand. And it was a river. It was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were rising. The waters were what? Rising. Waters was what? Were rising. Glory to God. All right, my dearest family. This is just the first part of the video. But I want you to listen to, you know, a more exciting um, this one is uh, exciting and inspiring, but this one will also inspire you even more, even more. And there's a lot of things you are going to learn from this. I mean it, I mean it. You know, I've shared similar of this kind of message before, still on Pastor Biodon, but listen to this, guys. I'll be right back. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Watch this. Oh, I will, I will always be successful. I will always, I will always Do you know that, I mean, I'm, great, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to, to the Lord. I'm the, in, this, in this ministry, I pastor more people than, more region than anybody. I've been talking for so long. Pastor Chris gave me so many regions. And they are pastor in America, United States of America. And they are pastor in New Zealand. And they are pastor in South Korea. They are all connected. They are all worship. And they are pastor in China. I mean, I mean almost two thirds of them. I'm a pastor in China, I'm their pastor in the Japan, I'm their pastor in Hong Kong, I'm their pastor in the, uh, even North Korea is also under my domain. You know? The, the Pacific Island. Why? Talking. Talking. We stop too soon. Some of you, you don't talk again. You are into gossiping. <laughs> you stop talking. You, now, you are not into life matters. Your job is to talk. If there's nothing to say, keep quiet. And keeping quiet can cost you. So you speak. 
Hallelujah. 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 Now, Moses said this thing first. Let's read where Moses said this thing. Moses described the righteousness. Paul now picked what Moses said and said, Things have changed. Deuteronomy 30. Let's read verse 12. Verse 11. Moses is talking. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Like I read in verse 8, the word is not far. It is not in heaven that thou should say, Who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it to us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou should say, Who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee. <laughs> Can you see there? Yes, sir. It was in the law. God has not changed. I wish somebody can come from America to help me. Brother, that's not for a Christian. Somebody will cross the sea to come and help me. I wish my uncle, I wish God would talk to my uncle to help me. What kind of journey is that one? <laughs> God should go to your uncle first to come to help you. See? So we'll go beyond the sea and get somebody to help me. Young people don't think like that. You don't need man to help you. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Who was there to help Jesus when he needed money? There was nobody there to help Jesus when he needed money. He said, Peter, go to the sea. The first fish you catch, you will see money there. And there was money. Ah. Who was there to help Jesus to feed 5,000 people? Men, women, and children not counted. His Bible says in Jeremiah 17, verse 7. Cause be the man that trusts the man. No, my heart is not in man. My heart is in Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. Hallelujah. He is my Lord and Savior. He is my Lord. Hallelujah. He is the one that paid the price for me. I've never depended on any man. Mm -mm. Ah, no, no, no. It's not possible. Somebody comes into church. One guy came one time. You know, he was giving some money. He doesn't know me. <laughs> when his own money finished, that's what I'm starting. Then he started a church in this camp, in this town. Went on television, started blasting my name all over TV. I didn't answer him. Then he called Iraq. Iraq was in the choir there. Am I right? He called Iraq. He says he's come and be singing for him. Enticing with fifty thousand. Was it fifty thousand dollars? Call some of my leaders, my pastors, offer them fifty thousand dollars to come and be pastoring for him. He didn't say anything. The word is in my mouth. I call you rock. I say, sit down there. He say, Am I right? Because don't move. He didn't follow him. If I mention his name, you all know him. In this town. He said, don't go anywhere. Sit down. He was in the choir. He said, no, you can't sign music contract to be singing on his radio. That, it, that is the end of him. That would have been the end of him. Singing some funny song that God doesn't want. <laughs> don't be led by opportunities. Don't listen to opportunities. Make sure you listen. Listen to your words. He refused to follow. That's why they, they, he's so special. Iraq is special to me. He refused to, to follow. He, stay, he stays with me. He, he didn't have any church that was passed on. He was just, he, was, he, wasn't, he didn't even know he was going to pass a church. Somebody offered you $50,000. That's how you change. <laughs> You change. I mean, $50,000 for a young boy. What do you think? You should have said, Lord, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> ah, shalom, bro. bro. So, this, this, this pastor has never given me $50,000. And I don't give them anything. Yes, I don't give them money. Yes, I'm not going to give you any money. I'll give you words. Yes, sir. That's what I'm giving you now, words. That's all. It will pay your school fees. 
it will build your house it will give you a powerful wife <laughs> it will give you a family it will give you everything that's all you need what I'm giving you is what you need you don't need money don't let anybody give you money give you words glory to God so what happened here? Moses said it. He said, verse 14, Deuteronomy 30. He said, but the word is very nigh unto thee. In your mouth and in your heart, that thou mayest do it. You see, in their own time, it was what? A doing. But in our time, it's a speaking. This is what surprised the angels. This salvation that we have received. Peter said, the angels seek to look into it. It was shocking to devil all his life as a devil you have to do something to get something from god all his life as a devil <laughs> then jesus came and died he thought he has won then a new race began this one you cannot condemn them this one you can't send them to hell once they believe in jesus they do nothing again all they do is what? Talk. Talk. Yes, sir. They will couldn't believe it. He said, come out. And before he opened his eyes, he has come out. Ah. <laughs> this one will just say, come out. Before he will say, who are you? Go and fulfill the law. Go and keep the Ten Commandments. Am I, are we mates? <laughs> he was, I mean, pushing everybody around like that. But this guy, one guy just got born again yesterday. Today, he said, will come out. Before he could think, he was out. What happened? This guy. I thought it was yesterday. He was not a Christian. He said, no, 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 no. This is not true. He tried to go back. He couldn't go back. Then the guy moved away to another place. Come out! That one also jumped out. Ah. <laughs> they now discover that this Christian, this is different. So what can we do to stop them? Let them not talk. The reason why a man will go to heaven or hell is not that he did something wrong, that he didn't say something right. Mm. Jesus Christ says, by your words, Matthew 12, verse 6, thou shalt be condemned. By your words, thou shalt be justified. You shall be justified. So, let's go back to Romans 10. I say, the law of faith is based on Romans 10. Verse 8 this time. He said, but what said thee? The word is nigh thee. Where is the word? In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which you preach. You see, you can see the, where it stopped with Moses. Moses said, then you do it. But Paul says, he didn't say then do it. He said, but we preach. Can you see? He removed the doing and put the new testament we preach to preach me to announce to announce we announce i announce who i am i announce it i announce it i wake up in the morning i open my window i announce who i am i step out of my room i announce don't do anything announce i say if i do that will money come leave the how to god he is the how. God is the how. You are to do the talking. He will do the how. He will orchestrate it. He will do it in a way that it will happen. A woman was talking to a mountain in front of her street. You know, because there's, there was a mountain in front of her area. And so she has to drive long distance. You know, the way the, the road network. She has to drive long distance to, to pass that place. So one day, she woke up. She became a Christian. She started talking to the mountain. In front of our street. <laughs> so it's better for them to construct, I mean, to have a road straight like this. So people were laughing at her. Mountain move in the name of Jesus. Every day she said, Mountain move. So people say, I can physically mountain move. Sister, stop talking. Then one day the government came and said there's a new plan and busted the rock and created a road behind it. And what came to pass? The mountain actually moved. 
government has to move the roads, you will always have what you say. If government has to replace government, you will have what you say. Heaven and earth shall pass away, Jesus Christ said, but my word shall not pass away until every title, every dot is fulfilled. What have you said today? You have to be conscious of your talking. It says that the word of it, we should preach that, look at the principle here, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth, oh, hallelujah, the Lord Jesus, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. If thou shalt believe with your heart. There are many Christians that believe. Believing is not enough. When you believe, you are made right with God. But you, are, you become the righteousness of God when you believe. But you, to enjoy the fruit of righteousness, you must speak. You have to speak. So what do we speak? He told us what to speak here. Look at it again. He said, if thou shalt confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus... The word is confess. Confess there means homologia in Greek. It means to speak the same thing in consent. Speaking the same thing in consent. Speaking the same thing in agreement with God. I'm not supposed to speak my feeling. I am to agree with God. To say things in agreement with God. Don't let us make Christianity so difficult. You know, when we're in church now, and, in church, and that's why I love my pastor, Pastor Chris, he made Christianity so simple. We want to want people to know that we are educated, we are intelligent. You know, I have to be cautioning myself many times, you know, not to go in that direction. Not people to know that I know stuff. And so we bombard people's brain with many things till they don't know which one to follow. Christianity is simple. Confess. That's what we teach you in church. If you come to church and no confession, you will say the service. What do we confess? We confess the lordship of Jesus. Look at it there. If that's a confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. What do I confess? That Jesus is Lord over my money. Hey. I confess the lordship of Jesus. Jesus is Lord over my home. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my business. I confess the lordship of Jesus. What do I confess? The lordship of Jesus. Don't just say I receive money. Jesus is Lord over my finances. Ask, lift up your hand and say, it. Say, Jesus is Lord. We confess what? The Lord Jesus. We confess the Lordship Jesus. He didn't ask you to confess your problem. He didn't ask you to confess your sin. He didn't ask you to confess what you are facing in life. I'm facing a lot of things. Makes no difference. Confess the Lordship of Jesus. Say, but I need to tell God what I'm facing. He say it's not necessary. Confess the Lordship of Jesus. A lot of things are happening in my life. I need to talk to somebody. You don't need to confess the lordship of Jesus. Jesus is lord over my home. Jesus is lord over my children. Jesus is lord over my womb. Therefore, I have, I have children. I'm, I have children. I get pregnant. You start by confessing the lordship of Jesus. Jesus is lord over the church. Therefore, there are people in the church. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Lift up your hand. Jesus is lord over my finances. Say it. Therefore, I have money. So don't just say, I have money. Start by saying, Jesus is Lord over my finances. He is Lord because I live by his faith. He is Lord over my body. He is Lord over my life. He is Lord over my future. He, therefore, I have a great future. He is Lord over my business. Therefore, I have a great business. Jesus Christ is Lord. Many people don't confess the Lordship of Jesus. And that's what Pastor Chris has been teaching us. That when we sing song, we must always put Lord Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Until his, his Lordship is seen, nothing will come to you. He's Lord over my leg. He's Lord over my heart. He's Lord over my body. Jesus is Lord over my home, over my family. Jesus is Lord over my finances. Therefore, I have money in abundance. Is Lord over everything. There's no way his name is mentioned and that he doesn't have the greatest power. Jesus, he said, confess that Jesus is Lord. If you confess the lordship of Jesus, he says, salvation is yours. 
That's what Philippians said. Philippians 2 verse 5. You confess the lordship of Jesus. The lordship of Jesus. Great faith is not trying to read a lot of Bible so I can have faith. Because the Christian in the, old, in the, in the early church, they didn't have Bible. So they have great faith. The church that Peter was in, the church that Paul pastor, they didn't have anything to read. They only have the Old Testament. So where did their faith come from? They only preached one message. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's it. All right, my dearest family, there you have it with the man of God, esteemed Pastor Biodo Lawa. You see, um, uh, when I was listening to this, I know one of the things that got me bringing this video to you was that, you know, a lot of times there are a lot of Christians that the only time you can hear them say any positive things about their life, not just positive things, the only time you can catch them or you can hear them declaring the word of God in whatever it is in their life is when they are in the four walls of the church. You see but they don't know that this is the life that every christian is supposed to live where you are talking every day every day you know i do that a lot i talk a lot i talk a lot you know into my day i talk a lot whatever it is i'm doing i talk into it i use the word of god to talk into it so the message was very inspiring to me that's why i got to bring it i say some other person needs to learn this they need to learn how to talk when they wake up it's not just to start worrying not just to start thinking or talking to people you know it's time to talk you talk into your day your future everything that concerns you so i believe that this message blessed you and i'd like to hear from you in the comment section what blessed you in the video so for those of you coming newly to my channel hit the subscribe button like today's video guys see my next video bye